Hey guys, so last week we made these gorgeous bookmarks and tags and this week we're going to be making cards from our scraps. Hey guys, it's LJ here. Welcome back to part three of our scrap hoarders challenge. So I'm just going to remind you of the bits that we have done. So week one was our, whoop, turn that over. Week one was our embellishments. And I did these pieces. Week two was tags and bookmarks. And I created these pieces. And today is cards. So, still going to be using the same set of scraps. I want to do a card that's based around this piece because I absolutely love that. So I definitely want to create a card using that piece. And possibly this one. So let's see. I'm going to pop these to the side for now. And we'll see what we've got. Okay, so I found this piece of solid coloured scraps, which was six by twelve. So that'll make a six by six card. I really liked how this book paper looked against the blue, but I didn't just want to do a topper on a card. So I found another piece and I've cut this piece down to five and a quarter by five and a quarter, which gives a really nice frame around the heart. Um, trimmed that down to fit because I did like, as I said, the card that blue card against the book paper. So I've trimmed this down and then I'm going to look through my other scraps to find a piece to layer in between. Um, so we're going to have the blue base, then we're going to have a coloured layer, then we're going to have the blue, then we're going to have the topper. Um, I was going to just leave it as it is, but I think the, the addition of another layer just adds something nice to the cards. So I wanted to use that white card with the sweets and the hearts on, but I didn't have a big enough scrap. Then I looked through and I found that I had this yellow one, which is where the cupcake was cut out from. I fussy cut it from this sheet. So I measured this piece, which was five and a quarter by five and a quarter, and then cut this piece down to five and five eighths, which was a nice halfway between five and a quarter and six. So then we get a nice even border all the way around. So I cut this down to a nice square. You're not going to be able to see the entirety of the pattern and that's not a problem it's just going to hint at the same colors as the um cupcake that was on the card so there's that on there with the blue on top and i just think that really makes it pop so i'm going to put my tape on now i've done this in a couple of videos but i wanted to show you again what i tend to do i lay my tape around the four edges i don't worry about the middle because this tape is strong enough um, and then i do it on all four sides and then i peel back a corner to help me layer it. I don't take all of the backing off because that's when it gets stuck. So I'm just going to burnish it in, not garnish it in. What's wrong with me? So here you go. I peel off one corner, tape, and I peel off the opposite corner. So then that gives me two corners to hold on to and position it nicely. When it's positioned, I push those two corners down, peel back the backing, and then it's in the right position. And I'm going to do the same for the next piece onto the card base itself. One corner I peel back both sides, the opposite corner I peel back both sides. Then I'm going to stick that onto the card base, making sure that the pattern is the right way up and the card base is the right way up. I'm doing this as a tent fold card just because I haven't made a tent fold in a while. So we've got that on there. Then I'm going to add our um, topper on. I'm going to use some foam squares on the back of this piece. Um, I was just checking which ones were the same thickness. So I'm going to use these nice large ones, which are a good thickness just popping them around the edge and then two onto the tag. I'm going to leave the tag for now. I'm just going to work with the larger piece. We're going to position that in nicely up in the top corner so that we've still got an edge around. And then this tea bag tag is going to sit in the bottom corner down there. Now, I was inspired by um, one of the ladies during the embellishments week of this. She made her own enamel dots. Now I'm not making them completely the way she did because she did keep them separate to her card but I'm going to use the same idea. So I'm adding these hearts on which are the same paper as the large heart. 
So I've got a large, a medium sized heart with a donut on, and then it's got half a strawberry and half a sweet. And then I managed to find two small hearts, one with the sweet and one with the strawberry. So they kind of match. I'm then going to put my glossy accents over them to turn them into enamel dots, but they're already on my card. Inside, because the inside of this card is a dark purple, I'm going to do the same layering technique. So this green one with the macaroons is one that I've also used on the front because we used our circle cutter to cut out some of the macaroons. So that's going to go inside there. And then on the inside of that, we're going to have a white layer that is five and a quarter by five and a quarter for you to write your sentiments and your notes on. I'm not going to stamp a sentiment in this card yet because I don't know what I want to use it for. So while I'm sticking these layers on, I'm just going to give you a quick reminder about what this incredible hop is about. So this hop is all about using your scraps. We have had three weeks. The first week was embellishments, second week cards and tags, and this week making a card from our scraps. Um, there were 11 ladies that took part in this um, hop each week. Uh, there was a little bit of confusion at the start because we were having 12, but unfortunately someone dropped out. So please make sure you have watched all 11 embellishment videos, all 11 books, marks and tags videos, and all 11 card videos. Um, and make sure you comment on them in order to be eligible for some of these grand prizes. There are three grand prizes. I will remind you of these at the end. There are also, I believe, three channels doing their own giveaways, which is really, really exciting. So I'm now going to pop the glossy accents onto my hearts and then we're going to leave this card to dry overnight um, to make sure it's nice and settled. So as I was saying there was a lady who in the first week of embellishment she made her own enamel dots which was just a genius idea. So she punched and die cut a load of different shapes and then either put them on foam dots or glue dots or um, a variety of different things and then she covered them in glossy accents i think it might have been liquid diamonds i'm not sure and left them to use in the future now i've still got a lot of die cuts from this and i think i'm going to do the same thing because that is absolutely a genius idea get them done have them ready for when you need them um so i've just done the large heart i'm going to use two small hearts and then we're going to leave this piece overnight to dry and we'll come back and see how it is I just want to say as well at this point, thank you very much for anyone who has come to my channel and subscribed due to this hop. I really, really appreciate you. Okay, so we're going to go on to our second card here. So this is an A6 card in the UK, which would be the equivalent of your A2. So it's um, a piece of our A4, which is your letter paper, folded in half, folded in half again. And I'm just going to bend one side back to make a Z fold card. And then I'm going to cut a strip wide enough to fit my larger butterfly on. That's what I'm trying to find now. There we go. Wide enough to cut my larger but fit my larger yeah, large enough to fit my larger butterfly on um, to create the Z going the opposite way. I'm then going to get my scoreboard. Now you could just fold this, but I wanted to show you that you can do it on your scoreboard as well. So I lined up the card where the score line is with a dip in my scoreboard and then I lined the other scrap up next to it and put in a score line. You could have just folded it in half and folded it back on itself the same way that I did the card base but I wanted to show you that you can do it either way. You can score or you can fold. That's totally up to you. So that's how our Z is going to look. Starting with this bottom piece I want to use this nice green gingham, give it a sort of, if we're going to do butterflies like a picnic style um, vibe which is why I wanted to use this gingham. So I've measured these pieces and I've cut them down to fit each space on my small lower Z. I'm going to stick those on, making sure the pattern is the same way up. I am slightly um, obsessive about things like patterns following on. Um, this one was quite easy to do because there was a dark, a green patch at the top and a white stripe at the bottom, so it's easy to follow. So I'm going to do those. I've then picked out a blue to go on the top half of the card and I've cut those to size and we're just going to stick this on. So I'm just putting glue on the first bottom part of that flap where this is going to go. You don't want to put it on the thin strip because if you might get it in the wrong place and it will stick where it shouldn't. Then I'm going to do it on the smaller part of the green. Again you want to do it on the small piece not the large piece so you know where it fits. I'm going to burnish that glue in and then there we have our nice Z fold with the bottom. And then at this point I realised that I wanted to do something interesting with this. 
I wanted to add a box pop-up card inside here. So I've cut three little tabs that I'm going to stick along the inside of the box. And then we're going to add our butterflies on some acetate. So I've put one in. And you can see me there sticking it to each side. Use my bone folder to hold it. And then I'm going to add the other two into that box there in the middle and one at the front like so. So now that we've got our pieces in, I'm going to use my acetate and I'm going to use my red liner tape because that is just the strongest tape that I can get in the UK. I tend to use this rather than normal double sided tape because acetate is um, fiddly, doesn't like sticking. So I've put a little bit of the red liner tape on the bottom of this acetate half inch strip and I'm going to stick it to one of my little white pieces inside. This is a little fiddly, but um, I've popped my bone folder in there to push against it. And then when that's in, I've done it at an angle, so I'm going to stick my butterfly on. And you need to make sure that your butterfly doesn't go past the edges of your card. Because if it sticks out when it's folded closed, it won't fit in the envelope. So you don't want it hanging off. You want to make sure that it's in and it's not hanging over the edge like so. So that is the furthest that the butterflies can go. I then did a few more on some different pieces of acetate. I had, I think, one on the front piece, two on the middle piece, and one on the back piece. I did the larger butterflies first. I then fitted the smaller butterflies around that. Some of them on their own piece. Some of them I just stuck lower down on the same piece. So there's my red tape on the acetate. I'm going to stick that onto the middle strip with a butterfly on. Figure out where I want that butterfly. There we go, cut down the acetate to the right length and then secure my butterfly on. Now, I don't want them all to look exactly the same. I don't want them all straight. I don't want them all pointing left, pointing right. I want them all angled slightly differently so that it genuinely looks like there are butterflies flying out of this box. Um, so the first one was straight. This one I'm angling to one side so that it looks more interesting. So we've added on most of the butterflies on our acetate strips. So we've got some near the top, some near the bottom. I set aside these four butterflies to put on the lower portion of the card. So I'm lying it flat. I'm going to, like I did the um, book butterfly on the tag, I'm going to use crackle accents. So I've laid down the purple and the book butterfly there. And then on the back piece, because that's the piece you're going to see, I'm going to do the pink and the blue. And I'm going to crackle accent the paper and the pink one. And what I thought this would be nice to do would be to have someone that you've given a gift to as well. You've got the card and the gift tag to match. So you've got this nice sort of set when you are giving them a present. Um, this I discovered was actually really quite painful. The glossy accents didn't hurt my hand too much. But the crackle accents did not want to come out of the bottle. This was, uh, uh, yeah, it was painful on my fingers. Um, so I'm going to pop that on and then we're just going to have a quick chat about how you have found this hop i'm hoping that you found it as inspirational as i have i know watching some of these videos i see people create things and i just think that's ingenious i would never have thought of that and it's absolutely fantastic so i now have a full list of things i want to try out um, a lot of the embellishments because i don't normally make embellishments I make a lot of cards and I make quite a few tags, but I don't really do embellishments. And there were some really, really interesting ideas. So I'm looking forward to creating some of those um, and seeing how, how they turn out. Now, at this point, I was contemplating adding the crackle accents to the other butterflies as well. But I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't in the end because I think it, it, it came out nicely having the contrast. Hey, yes, we are back to take a look at our finished cards so we'll start with this one which was the tea um tea bag one i don't know what else to call it um i absolutely love this pop of yellow that hints to the uh cupcake and then we've got our three hearts which have been glossy accented and then inside we've got the green and the white so we've got the green there so it plays on both of these cards inside and then we've got the second one, which I'm really excited about because this one is using, yeah, it's done it again. That's awesome. So this one is using the crackle accents, not the glossy accents. So this is what it will look like closed. And I absolutely love that it has fully curled up this butterfly. I think that's absolutely beautiful. And then the pink one's got it as well. And then we've got our 
our butterflies that flap around inside our box. So, you know, I'm sure people have done box cards before and I'm sure people have done these Edfold cards before. But I thought it'd be nice to do something, because I have so many butterflies, combining the two. So we've got a box, a pop-up box card inside our Edfold card. And none of our... Oh my gosh, I was about to say ballerinas. They're not ballerinas. <laughs> oh dear. None of our butterflies. <laughs> Breathe. None of our butterflies stick outside, so this will fit nicely inside an envelope. Um, yes. So there is our... I'm tempted to crackle accent these two butterflies, but I think they're actually quite nice, just flat as they are we've got so much movement here and these have got the crackle on yeah so there are my two cards to finish off this incredible hop so yeah which is your favorite i'm i'm really torn i think this one is my favorite i think but yeah anyway, what's your favorite let me know um so i just want to remind you so this is the final instalment of our Scrap Porters um, hop, which has been absolutely wonderful. Um, you need to have commented on every video every week to be in with the chance of winning one of the three grand prizes. And don't forget that there are other channels that are running their own giveaways as well, which is absolutely fantastic. If you check in the description box, you can find all the dates and everything for your the dates you've got to have your comments sub submitted by. Then they'll pick a winner randomly from someone who's commented on every video and then you have seven days to claim your prize so please follow the hop to the end go all the way through like comment subscribe share do all those wonderful things um catch up with some incredible crafters and yeah thank you very much for spending time with me today guys keep crafting and i'll see you soon bye